Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan and I'd like to talk about this little book today, Relativity of a Short Introduction by Russell Stannard. And I believe Russell Stannard is an expert in physics, amateurist professor um, at the Open University. And um, this book was published in 2008. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of these books. You know, I'm not really an expert in much, but I do like to learn. And these very short introductions published by uh, Oxford University Press, I find are uh, very readable short books. Um, and, you know, helps you learn about things perhaps you feel that you should know. And having not much of an idea about science, not from school, um, I thought I'd tackle this one about relativity. And all I knew prior to reading this book was really that relativity was this complicated theory discovered by Albert Einstein in the early 20th century. But this book was a real eye-opener and uh, very readable, actually. I thought that this would just be completely above my head. And some of it is, some of the equations, etc. I mean, I wouldn't even pretend to try and understand some of them with my limited mathematical knowledge. And there's not an awful lot of it anyway in this little book. He, you know, Stannard himself says he'll try and avoid complicated maths. So basically the book revolves around the two theories of relativity. There's the special theory and the general theory of relativity. And this, the special theory of relativity I discovered is um, basically uh, based on the idea that any object in an inertial frame of reference, basically um, not accelerating or slowing down, but staying at a steady speed, um, its speed is relative to other objects around it, also in inertial frames of reference. And you know that there's plenty of examples in the book of, um, you know, someone sitting on a train and uh, viewing the scenery outside. And, and you know, everything moves, even the, the world moves, as we know. Every, it, the sun moves, the cosmos moves, everything moves to some degree. And everything is relative to each other. Also, though, um, perhaps paradoxically, um, the speed of light is the same for everybody or everything wherever that thing is so that seems to kind of break the rules in a way and it turns out that um, some given facts which we've um, inherited uh, through science um, and uh, you know, accepted as part of our daily lives because they're visibly correct and proven to be correct some of those don't work out quite how we imagine them to on the grand scale of relativity. And uh, the closer someone travels to the speed of light, um, time slows down. Objects shorten uh, the faster they go as well. Um, so these physical properties, which we take as just common sense things, are challenged by special relativity. And there's this idea that Einstein formulated of space-time, whereby instead of seeing space and time as separate things, space-time seems to see uh, the cosmos in four dimensions. Um, and of course time can be altered as well as um, as well as space in the, the laws of relativity. Um, of course, the famous equation E equals mc squared is uh, dwelt upon as well, how mass and energy relate and that how um, mass can be released as energy um, and could be changed into each other. Uh, they're not distinct as previously thought. So that's the, sp uh, the, the laws of special relativity, the theory of special relativity. But then Stannard goes on to the theory of general relativity, where we, where we have to take the uh, forces of gravity and acceleration into account, um, which of course affects all of us. And this dwells on um, 
things on a much broader scale. We're talking about the universe here. So um, gravity has some effect on time. It can slow um, time down. Um, gravity can bend light. Um, and it turns out that planets and uh, celestial objects create their own kind of splash in space-time, this um, depression in space-time, which affects space and time round it. So we have this curvature of space and time around these, uh, around these sources of uh, gravity. We're also, he also goes on and talks about black holes, where stars are so dense they kind of implode on in, in, into themselves and create this, um, this massive depression in space-time, which sucks everything in. And, uh, you know, fascinating uh, subject. Um, gravitational waves are talked about as well. As well as the whole idea of geometry, um, in general relativity, how that's altered. Some of the givens, such as um, three, the three angles of a triangle always adding up to 180 degrees, are uh, proven to be, um, are challenged by the theories of general relativity. So for somebody who is pretty clueless about science, but has a desire to learn about different topics, I'd, I'd highly recommend this book. Um, you know, some of it did go over my head a bit, I'm not going to lie to you, but it's a really good introduction to this fascinating subject. And please hang around because I've just put a brief slideshow containing some of the themes and the structure of this book. Thanks for watching, bye.